50 gas, but it's not a big problem for me. Uh, and that's where we have to head. Thank you. I'll, I'll, I'll take that applause. Every single thing that I did for the environment, some of it was long-term payback, some of it short, it was all good for my bottom line. And that's what I'm here to talk about today, the hierarchy of doing that. I'm not interested, my father was a wonderful guy, he was not interested in the list of things I said no to, because I was saying no to smog, I hate the smog, and this he said, Eddie, what's that other list? I said, what are you talking about? What's the list of the things you say yes to? What do you say yes to? And that's why I bought the first electric car. Well, I'm saying no to smog, maybe I'll try an electric car. And I did that, and that's what I'm here to talk about today. I know there's probably half this room or more that could not afford to have any substantial solar system on their house. It's very possible. There's new plans now, Solar City and others will lease you that solar thing. So maybe you want to do it that way, maybe you don't. But some of those things are big ticket items. But can anybody here, are there any of you here that might be able to afford a light bulb? <laughs> An energy saving light bulb? Can you afford maybe uh, an energy saving thermostat, can you afford some weather stripping, can you afford to ride a bike of weather and fitness permit? Apparently you can, you came here, look at the bikes out there. Can you afford to take public transportation to get here? Apparently you can, when it's available near you. And it is in this beautiful city of San Jose. There's a wonderful public transportation system. Every single thing that I did for the environment, good for my bottom line. Some with a long-term payback, some with a very short term. And that's what that book is about that I'll be signing later, Living Like Ed. It's about doing it exactly the way I did in 1970. Now it's many years later, so there's a lot more choices, but to pick the low-hanging fruit first. To do the stuff that's cheapest and easiest. Can't afford solar? I understand. Can't afford a hybrid? I'm with you. Can't afford solar? Hot water even. Forget solar electric. I get it. Can you afford a light bulb? Can you afford to do some of these cheap and easy stuff? Can you afford to go and see a lot of these beautiful exhibitors there that have stuff that is cheap and easy? Look at the wonderful stuff that's out there. You got Solar City for solar if you want. You got people with incredible insulation technologies. And let me tell a story on myself right now. I have a book called Living Like Ed. There's a show called Living With Ed with my wife and I. Thank you for that. <laughs> It was on Home and Garden Television, and now it's on Planet Green. And that house, that 1936 house that's depicted in that show, it's 1,585 square foot, and I made it as energy efficient as possible. Did a show with it. DVD came out about the show, and a book and everything. Isn't it wonderful? It's so great. Uh, some friends came to mind, these green realtors, Ron and Tammy Schwalski, and they said, we'd like to do home energy assessment on your house. I said, well, you can come on by if you want, like, you know, the before and after with the old bodybuilding ads. You know, I'm kind of the after. I've done such a great job. I don't know why you'd want to waste your time with a home energy assessment. Because I right away in 19, in the 80s, I put big, thick insulation in the attic. Uh, I have new insulation in the walls. I put in double pane windows, energy saving thermostat. I did all this great stuff. You know, there's no more that you could do. You want to come by and test my house. And they came by with a couple things I hadn't seen in the late 80s. One is called an infrared camera. You might have heard of it. Uh, I had heard of it, but I knew I, they'd done a good job, and so I didn't need that. And they came in with a blower on the front door. They put this blower fan. They put those things, and you can see all of it in the center aisle here, all that equipment to get what's called a home energy assessment. And I urge everybody, if you're going to spend any money in the foreseeable future on your home, do it to get a home energy assessment. Because what happened next, they sat me down and said, well, tell me the good news. Well, we have some news for you. Great, probably pretty good, huh? <laughs> not really. <laughs> what do you mean, not really? I got to think, you got all that stuff, but Nobody defrauded you yet. No, they didn't have an infrared gun in the late 80s. I mean, they had, a few people had them, but the insulator guys didn't come have them in the truck. There were some people doing the blower fan stuff, but that was very rare. Late 80s, come on. But we have that technology now. You've got a lot of work to be done. What are you talking about? They sealed up the crawl space beneath the house. We changed out this water heater, had an old water heater for backup. I have solar hot water, but if it's cloudy for a week, you still want hot water, etc. So I had a solar, you know, I had a backup natural gas hot water heater that didn't work that much. I had a forced air heating and what it's not, this is not a passive solar design house. So we did all this stuff, incredible stuff, work that we did on the house. 
Uh, I put in this A.O. Smith water heater, it's 96% thermal efficiency, did all this stuff, and they put the blower in the front door again, still hemorrhaging energy. Where? We open this little door that goes down to my basement, this little tiny basement just has a heating and air unit and the, the water heater in it, and there was an area that was just like an open chimney with cobwebs blowing in the wind where they put that compressor in the front door. We, we never saw it, you couldn't see it, there was no daylight coming through, <clears throat> rain was not getting in because there was an overhang of shingles, so we never knew it was there, I was hemorrhaging energy. This is what we need to do today, we need to have pots of money for people so every person in America can have a home energy assessment and do what you can. They're going to give you a checklist, and I did, I did just about everything on the checklist. Maybe people are on a real budget, you only can do one or two things the first year, but you're going to save so much energy in doing that and so much money, money in doing that. And let's talk about what's at stake. It's not just our pocketbook, folks. Let's talk about some of the challenges that we have. Let's talk about some of the challenges. I told you about the air in LA, not just LA, it's Houston and Bakersfield with the dirty air, horrible dirty air, Beijing, uh, Hong Kong, Bangkok.